All right, everyone, time for a roll call. Mark one, here, looking good. Mark five, here, all right. Mark 41, right here, okay. Mark DB, oh, that's me. Wait a minute, I don't have Mark DB. You're Darth Vader, uh-oh, I gotta go, oh, ow. <sighs> hey, everybody, it's Matt Cuffer 360 and today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different than what I normally do. In this video, I'm going to be opening up not one, but two Lego sets. Clove Scott Walker 20th Anniversary Edition and the Lego Avengers Iron Man Hall of Armor. So the first set I'm going to be opening is the Clone Scott Walker 20th Anniversary Edition. And what's special with this set is that it comes with the 1999 Darth Vader figure. Which is why I wanted to make this video in the first place. I wanted to show you guys my thoughts on it. But yeah, and also comes with a really cool Kashyyyk Trooper, which is something I've been wanting for a while. But yeah, so we're gonna start doing. We're gonna start off the video with the um, Clone Scott Walker 20th Anniversary Edition. So on the back of the box, you can see it comes. Uh, you can see it comes with some cool play features, and you can see like with a spider droid over here. You can shoot the. You can shoot the stud shooters. Same with the. Same with the walker itself, and then also says that you can connect. All the limited edition minifigures. But yeah, enough of that. Let's get in to the actual opening. I'm excited. Alright, so take my scissors I've got here and start cutting open the box. Alright. There's one flap open. We just gotta open up the other tape. And, oh, come on, it's stuck. There we go. All right, we've got the flaps open. I'll we'll just open these up. Um, all right, let's see. We have, let's see, this is bag one. Uh, we've got the instructions over here. And then bag two. Some stickers. And, yep. That's the whole box. All right, so so here's what we have. We have the instructions. Very nice. I like how like it looks so shiny. That's what I like about these twenty sets. They're really shiny. There's actually like the old sets, and then we got some stickers that we put on the walker and the spider droid. Bag two and bag one. You can see, oh look, you can see the the base where Darth Vader goes on. Very nice, but yeah, let's get to the actual opening now. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Now, last one, let's get a closer look at everything we have here. So, the first little figure we have here is a battle droid. Very standard and normal. It's not a pilot. It's not. A, it's, it's just a normal infantry droid. Comes with a standard. Comes with a standard blaster rifle. Yeah, very nice. Has a little stud in the back in case you want to touch a backpack. Yeah, very nice head. Legs don't move. I wish they would add that. They've they've been keeping it this way for a while. I think it would be really cool if they were to make the legs move. But yeah. And then uh, over here, we have a Kashyyyk Trooper. Which, might I say, looks really nice, by the way. With the little camo detailing on the mask and on the torso. Comes with another one of the rifles. Standard rifles. And then, it's really fancy helmet mold. Which I think is the same as the pilot trooper helmet from like the what's it called the Endor battle. It's normal stormtrooper head. Really nice. Let's see, look at the helmet because I think it just looks really good. Very nice navy green, I think it's called. Got some nice camo detailing on the sides. 
has a little visor for them to look through. Little breathing slot so they can breathe, obviously. But yeah, very nice figure. Probably one of my favorite, probably my favorite type of clone trooper they've ever released. Um, here we have what is called the Wookiee Warrior on the box, but uh, for the sake of the video, we'll just call him Mel. Why not? Uh, <laughs> uh, it comes with a very nice, like, hunting rifle type thing. Um, it doesn't have the same type of belting that Chewbacca has. It's like if you look at a Chewbacca figure, you can see that you can see that a Chewbacca figure. This is my Chewbacca right here. Has a little special belt type printing thing or molding. Um, Mel here doesn't have that. So yeah, this guy is not Chewbacca. In case you're wondering. Very different. The fur is, the fur is considerably more green. It's considerably greener than Chewie's. But Chewie just very like, like a bright tan. But this guy or Mel, I should say, this is kind of like a dark green color, similar to the troopers. But yeah, uh, very nice. Here we have the. I think these are called Wookie battlements. I'm not sure. It comes with the it comes with the stormtrooper sniper, I think it's called. I don't know, it's really cool though. You see these really nice rock slash claw pieces. I I've never seen this before. I don't have any of those. So new piece, very nice. Um, here we have a spider droid. I've wanted one of these for a while because they're very they're very unique. They call them spider droids, but they only have four legs. They kind of walk like spiders though. Um, we have the stud shooter. We're just gonna have it. Attack this thing. I think oh, I'm gonna have to go that one later. Um, I have to go get that one later. But yeah, the little antenna thing is like these little like musketeer type swords. Very interesting and unique. I've never seen that. Yeah. I've never seen that one before. But yeah, I don't know. I just messed up the legs that way. Whatever. Yeah, spider droid. Very nice, unique. Here we have. Here we have the uh, the clone scout walker. Um, it's very nice. Has some little bumps in the legs. Um, the legs actually move really. They move really nice. They can you have more control over the legs than with the spider droid. Oh, I think that one just pinched my finger. But yeah, again, stud shooter. I'm not gonna shoot it right now. Um, but stud shooter is supposed to represent this thing. This is supposed to be the cannon. This is what the stud shooter represents. Oh, it's falling over. And then up here, there's a very, very, very long antenna. And then here's the little seating area where you can put, where you can put the clone, the Kashyyyk Trooper if you want. Again, it's a very nice build. I like these, I like the little stickers that give it more detail. This one gives like a little battle, battle damaged, worn out look. Very nice. Again, it's the main part of the set. But the main buy of the set is obviously the 20th anniversary Darth Vader set. Or not set. <laughs> Darth Vader figure, I should say. Oh, I apologize for that. It's very nice. You can um, take it off the stand. Um, use of the uses is a metallic lightsaber, metallic red lightsaber. Um, uses a really simple printing here. Uh, I haven't looked at the back. I'm pretty sure the back... Oh. Oh, I didn't know that. That is so cool. Look at that. 20 years Lego Star Wars. I did not know that. That is a nice little Easter egg. Um, use the old little mask thing for Darth Vader. Comes with this really nice gray head. Which is something they didn't really do back then. It was mostly all yellow heads. For all the guys who were supposed to have tan heads. They made them all yellow until like early 2000s. But yeah, very nice. You can see like little scar mark and detail here. And use the use the old paper style cape instead of the newer fabric ones. What I what they what I wish they should have done or the what they could have done is given them a chrome lightsaber hilt. That's what they did. So back then they you they gave all the figures chrome lightsaber hilts, but until like two thousand eight or something like that, I don't even know. Um uh, 
they switched it out with the metallic lightsaber hilt because I guess the chrome started chipping off or whatever. I don't know. The only figure today I know that uses the chrome lightsaber hilt is Count Dooku, but I don't have that one. But yeah. Very nice. I love the figure. Um it's the main reason why I got the set to show you guys. Um again I really like the mask. A uh, quick fun fact for y'all, this is actually my first Darth Vader figure, so sorry if I'm like over exaggerating a little bit about the deep. Sorry if I'm over exaggerating a little bit. My first Darth Vader. And it goes in this really nice base with like with like um shiny text on it. Twenty years Lego Star Wars. Nineteen ninety nine, twenty nineteen. Darth Vader. And then this little thing right here. If you remember like on the back of the if you remember like on the back of the box, it said you can connect the figures. So, like, Leia goes first, then Luke, Lando, Darth Vader goes next, actually, and then Han Solo's last. And I say Han Solo's last because the, the set number is um, 75261, and these are going by set number. So, if you look at the set number for Han Solo, 75262, so that means that, the, that this Darth Vader set, this Darth Vader figure, goes before Han Solo. But yeah, very nice, very unique. And yeah, really like this set. Again, Darth Vader's really cool. It the printing is very simplistic though, if you look at it. So yeah, enough of that. I feel like I've been going on forever talking about Darth Vader and stuff. <sighs> but yeah, so put all these to the side. No, the Shake Trooper. I don't want the camera to fall over. Spider droid, standard infantry droid. All right. Now that we've got, now that we've got that set taken care of, let's go on to the bigger set. Iron Man hollow armor. So, all right. I'm just taking my scissors again. Wait, I'm. Another quick fact here. Um. This set is actually, this set comes with three exclusive minifigures, and and those are Iron Man Mark 1, Iron Man Mark 5, and Mark 41. You know, while we're here, let's, let's, um, let's see what figures we have. So, we have two Outriders, and I already have some, I already have some of those from Infinity War sets I've gotten in the past. Um, Iron Man Mark 1. Which is one of the exclusive figures, Mark V and Mark 41. And then, oh yeah, and we get Mark 50 as well. Almost forgot about that one. Um, and then up here, up here, this I'm pretty sure is Mark 37. Can't say for sure. I'm pretty sure it is though. It's basically the first ever Hulk Buster, but yeah. Anyways, enough me rambling on about the set. Let's open this up. So this is going to have bag one. Bag three. Instruction book number two. Instruction book number one. Bag four, which seems to be Mark 37. And bag two. Um, a buttload of stickers this time. Last time it was only like, last time it was only two. Um, anything else I'm missing? Nope. Alright, anyway, time to start building. Alright everyone, it's that time again. I am we are now done with the Iron Man Hall of Armor set. So now, just like we did with the Star Wars set, let's take a let's take a closer look at each of the minifigures we have here. 
So, here we have the Iron Man Mark I suit. Uh, it's a very nice suit, even though, even though it's his very first suit. It's very old, as you can tell. Um, uh, my camera's not focusing, but there's little, like, there's little rust marks in several places around the suit. And, um, uh, yeah, uh, the suit wasn't that advanced back then, because he didn't know how to use, like, the repulsor beam and stuff. You only have that one light. The suit, the mask doesn't flip up. Um, and within all the other suits that aren't Mark Fifty, they just use regular clear minifigure heads. So yeah, that's Mark One. Here's Mark Five, my personal favorite. I think red and silver goes really well with Iron Man. Again, just a clear head. Yeah, very nice. Again, it's a red and silver color. Oh, that's so out of focus. There you go, much better. Yeah. Red and silver goes really well. I don't understand why Tony do that. Alright, now it's more in focus so you can take a closer look at all the rust marks and stuff. Oh, I forgot to show you the back. The back of the torso is just wide open. He didn't even. Tony back then didn't even think to hide all the wires and stuff. But then he got more advanced. This is Mark 41. I can't, as I like to call it, the Batman suit, because it looks a lot like him. Um, it's black and gold. Um, it's very nice. It has some weird line printing on the front. There's a lot of lines on the torso as well. as a lot of gold lines. Same with the back. Again, clear head. Um, also some gold hands as well. Um, there's some printing, but the printing goes all the way down to the feet. Yeah, very nice. Again, I think it looks like Batman, kind of. Like a Batman suit, one of Iron Man suits, that would be that would be the one that he would wear. Um, and here is I Iron Man Mark Fifty, aka Tony Stark. So this one is not a clear head. Um, this is actually just the oh it fell out. Oh no no okay I gotta take it out. Um, this is just a one by one clear blue round thingy piece. I don't know what it's called. Oh, sorry about that, but, um, he comes with some nice black spiky hair. He uses the triangle suit, like how he, like how the Mark VI suit does in the original Avengers. Um, and the mask on this one, this suit mask, is probably the simplest out of the other ones. Like this one, very fancy line printing. Same with this one here. This one's just weird. But yeah, the only lines we see are just those. Very simple. Um, so this, the way this works is, so in the set, on the box as well, you can like put Tony Stark's hair on it, but it looks weird because you're supposed to have like the mask on him. But you can also put the mask on. You can also put the mask on there and just put his hair, put the hair on Tony. That's what I'm doing for now. And then over here, over here is like a little. Like fire missile piece right here. You just set, you set the piece on there and it will stick. And you have a nice little storage spot for any Iron Man helmet. It could be Mark V, it could be Mark 41. Heck, it could even be Mark 1. But yeah. Here are our two outriders. Look exactly the same, no difference whatsoever. Um unlike the unlike all the other endgame ones, these don't have claws. I'm pretty sure all the other ones from the endgame wave of sets have claws, but you know, these don't. So that's basically the Infinity War Outriders. Here we have a couple of little fire pieces and the little robot thing, probably controlled by Friday or something, or Jarvis maybe. And the little fire extinguisher to put out the fires. Um, over here is the um, the Mark 37 suit. I think it's called the Igor suit, something like that. Yeah, it's very nice. You can You can lift these open. And then if you want to, you can put Tony. If you want to, you can put, like, Tony or something in there. Drop him up like that. Uh, bam. Um. Doesn't work. Doesn't work well, though. Doesn't work as well, though. And it probably should. But, yeah. Very nice. 
I feel like they could have done a bit. I, f- I feel like they could have done more with this suit than what they did. They could have added like more room to put the minifigure in, but whatever. You can't complain. Yes, that's a nice little construction type printing. Um, this was the only. Let me focus for a sec. This was the only non. This piece right here was the only non stickered piece in the entire set. This is a little eye detailing for the suit, but yeah. Um, looks very nice. I actually kind of like it. It has some little like silver ink bar, iron bar pieces on top. I don't know. I think it's supposed to like add a little details. But anyways, let's move on. Move off to the side. Let's take a look at Hall of Armor itself. I'm absolutely destroying it right now. That's not good. Okay, so the first little part of the set here. So the first thing I want to p- point out is that you can actually take apart these little sections here. Like you split them. So this is like a little computer area. And as you can see, like if you look closely, there's a little sticker here. That says Jarvis on it. Um, cameras. Yeah, you look closely. A little sticker there. It says Jarvis. You can see it right there. It's very nice. Um, other stickers: Intruder Ruler, showing an Outrider, Blocked Collar. I think it's Happy Hogan. I'm not sure. Um, there's some other computery stuff. Spinning chair, which I like. Um, a coffee mug. There's another coffee mug over here. There's like a little blender. But anyways, the next part I want to show you is this. This is this is where like uh, I this is where like the suits stand when they're getting like manufactured, if that's the word. I don't know, but yeah. So as you can see, what I did earlier is um I'm just doing it to focus it. What I did was I just put oh it's and Tony fell off. I was gonna put I put Tony Stark on here. And they have like these little things like working on him and stuff. Yeah. Very nice. I think he's like adding like finishing touches, maybe painting his suit if you wanted. If you wanted to. And then again, switch out the hair. This little area over here. Take out the mask. Put it on. Put the hair right here, which is how you had it on the box. Um just for now I'm gonna leave the mask on. But yeah, that's this thing. You can spin it around if you want to. They connect using like these little like axle rod pieces. Yeah, so this one, this goes in here, and then that goes into that little hole there. So yeah. And then the hall of armor itself has a little satellite up here with like some little sonar dishes. I think it is. I don't know. So yeah, it sticks to this little brick here. Over here, probably my favorite part of the entire set. We have a little blender. Like, it's really cool how they include this detail. It's like it's supposed to represent a little button here. I mean, you can't really shake it around on the sand. Another coffee mug there. Over here is like some weaponry. Like, here's this. Even though I think, I don't know what that is. I think, like, you're supposed to hold it and it goes like the, like, the repulsor beam and it goes like choo choo. But, this is like, this is a red stud shooter, which I have never seen before. I've never seen a red stud shooter. But, yeah, I think it's, a, I think it's exclusive to this set. I have no idea. It's really cool though, and then, and then you can make like the figures hold it. You can make the figures hold it. There's Mark V, for example. Make the figures hold it. You can um, shoot. Really, like, uh, I was able to get that one. It didn't go too far. Just went behind the set. But yeah, it's really nice. My mask fell off. Really nice. Very nice little thing they included. Um, uh, over here, again, there's Tony Stark's hair. There's a wrench, just in case you need to fix a suit. This is a really cool. This is a jetpack. And you can attach it to any suit, help it fly. Preferably the Mark 1, since that one can't even fly. So, what you need to do, you just stick the jetpack on there, and bam. He can fly, just, just really easy. Well, yeah, it's really cool. I think the jetpack is like the coolest part of the set. Um, you can fly. Yeah. Really interesting how they included that. I think they, I think they did that specifically for the Mark One. Just so we can, um, just so we can give it a little boost. 
if Tony needs to use it. Even though I'm pretty sure it was destroyed in the, at the end of the first Iron Man movie. But yeah. Very nice. And um, some little fire pieces. Some little fire pieces here in case like the Outriders decide to set the building on fire. I'm pretty sure I already talked about those. My bad. Just in case. Just in case any of these Outriders decide to set the building on fire. Then this little guy comes and fixes it. But yeah. Very cool set. I like it. But yeah. That's just about it. That's just about it for today's video. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new. And, um, yeah, I'll do a, I'm going to do a recap of the sets we got here. But, yeah, so, um, thank you. Thank you all so much for watching. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you guys really, really soon. Goodbye.